I'm Kendall from My Mother's Patients and today I'm going to show you how you can make a wooden beaded oyster shell necklace just like these. Stay tuned to learn how. I've got everything laid out here that you're going to need. Starting with an oyster. I got this one last year at the beach. A large bowl with about an inch of water in the bottom. One or two large sponges. A drill. A drill bit. This is a 3 32nd inch drill bit. Polycrylic. A brush to use with the polycrylic. Um, something that's older, probably has paint stuck in it, would be good to use just because the polycrylic can be a little bit difficult to get out of the paintbrushes. Lots of beads, different sizes. I have this entire bag of gold beads that I bought off Amazon just because I know that I want gold beads and this way I don't have to paint the gold beads. I only have to paint the accent beads. So then I've got, in all I've got four bead sizes here. Um, gold paint to paint the oyster, paint brushes for that, and to paint some of the beads. You're going to want other paint colors for your accent beads. Hemp. And then this is optional really, but I use it to hold the oyster to the necklace right at the bottom here to the hem. But these are little gold rings. I think I got these off Amazon, but you can probably get them at Michael's or Joann's. And then scissors. So the first thing that we're going to start off with is drilling the holes in the oysters at the top. So I'll be right back. Have this cleared off a different camera angle. Be right back. Okay, so I've got everything set up. This is the oyster that I'm gonna be drilling into. Now, um, where I wanna drill into this oyster is right up at the top. And I'm gonna go in kind of at an angle and very, very slow. Just a little bit and then come back out, rinse it off. You don't wanna add too much heat because we don't want the oyster to crack. So we're just going to set one of our sponges in the water and then we just want it so that this oyster is just going to have a little bit of water there with it like when we press down. We don't want it all sitting in a puddle, we just want a little bit of water like that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the drill, we're going right up here near the top at an angle, really slow at first, just a little bit of water. A little bit of the oyster shell is already coming off. So I'm gonna rinse that a little bit in my water. I'm gonna rinse the oyster shell off. And then find that same spot that I was working with and just keep going slow. When you do get all the way through, you're likely gonna drill into the sponge a little bit and get it caught. Make sure you're very careful and go really slow because you don't want to break your shell. Now you can see where I've started drilling right here. Okay, so I'm back. I've got my oyster with the hole cut through the top and I'm just going to start painting the back of it gold. This will take probably three or four coats.
Okay, so that first coat is done. It's gonna need a few more, so I'm gonna let it dry and just keep going. For the accent beads, I use six half inch wooden beads. For the necklace I'm making today, I'm gonna be painting those six beads navy blue. If you don't have pre-painted gold beads like I do, now would be a good time to paint those. Okay, so I'm back and I've got my six color beads all painted and I've got the back of my oyster shell painted gold. What's next is to paint the other side of the oyster shell, which is gonna be the front of our necklace, with just the edge of it gold. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see how I do this and it's probably gonna take one or two coats as well. So I'm just using that same gold paint and now I've got much smaller brushes. Okay, so our shell's looking pretty good, but the actual shell's not very shiny. So what we're gonna do to make it shiny and to uh, increase the durability of it, is we're gonna put on, I think about two coats of polygrylic. So just do one side, let it dry, and then flip it over into the other side. While I'm waiting on the polycrylic to dry on the first side, I've gone ahead and grabbed two pair of tweezers and the largest of the gold rings from this pack. And I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. One of these rings will go in the hole that we drilled in the oyster, and then the other one will go at the top of the necklace. The one that goes through the oyster needs to be open pretty wide, but the one for the top of the necklace only needs to be open slightly because we just have to get the hemp through it. Okay, so I've got my Oyster, all painted, and two coats of polycrylic. 
I've got my six accent beads painted and dry. I've got two of the gold rings opened and I've got a small size and a medium size of beads and then I have small beads pre-painted in gold. Hey, are you helping? Yes, oh that is so nice. So the first thing we want to do is take one of these gold rings and fit it through the hole that we drilled in the oyster. Alright, so once you get your gold ring through, you just want to close it up again. There's no way a gold ring is going to fit through my oyster and clothes, so I'm just going to use them. I've got my two previous necklaces, oyster necklaces that I made laying here so I can use them as a guide and a template. Since I couldn't get the ring to fit through the, this oyster like I did the other ones, I'm just going to use the hemp. But normally, I was using a ring. For your necklace, you're going to want an absurdly long piece of hemp. We're going to be tying knots in it and it's gonna be, it needs to be long enough for both sides. The longer the better. You don't wanna get all the way to the end and find that your necklace is too short. So I'm gonna string this piece of hemp that I just cut through my oyster. tape on the end in order to get through there. So I just took a piece of masking tape and stuck it on the end. Sit down, you're fine. What is this? What are these? What's this here? And I'm going to roll this. Did you get a treat? That's a good boy. Now I'm going to trim it kind of to a point and hopefully, yes, I'll be able to get it through. And I'm just going to tie a knot at the bottom. Okay, so I really wanted that knot at the top as snug as possible, so I kept working it until I got it down. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to string one of my pre-painted small gold beads through both strings. So it's going to be right above that knot at the bottom of our necklace. So I've got that knot and then the first gold bead. Next, I'm gonna add knots on both sides separately. So I'll have two knots side by side above that gold bead. Next, we're gonna add three small beads, one wooden, then a gold, then a wooden on each side.
Once you've got your three beads on each side, add another knot. Next is the section with the accent beads. We'll have four small wooden beads and our three accent beads will be in the middle. So wooden bead, accent, wooden, accent, wooden, accent, wooden. Now that you've got those beads added on both sides, add a knot on top of them. Next is one small, three medium, another small. And these are all just the plain wooden beads. Once you finish that section of wooden beads and your knot, add one gold bead and a knot on each side. Okay, next after those gold beads and the knots, we're going to do the same as before. One small wooden bead, three medium, another small. So far, I've got this much done. How you, what do you think, Gibbs? Good. <laughs> We've got three more sections just like the last, small wooden bead, three medium wooden beads, small wooden bead with a knot after each. So I'm going to go ahead and do those and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Just to make sure we're at the same place, after your gold bead, you should have four sections of small wooden beads and three medium beads followed by small wooden beads with knots in between each section. I, we're almost done. Okay, good. Now we're gonna create a loop knot at the end of each section. Do that on both sides. You want your loops to be about the same size, but it really doesn't matter. Next, we're gonna place a medium bead through the looped section we just made on each end. So you should have a bead and a loop coming through it. Now you wanna take that other gold ring that you'd open earlier and place it through each of these loops. And then we're just gonna close this loop. Grab your tweezers and close that ring. Gibbs is modeling one of the necklaces for me. Once you've closed your ring, go ahead and trim any excess you have. And that's it, we're all done. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more DIY and craft videos.